Teardown Time. This is an N-Gear keyboard video monitor switch. It must be pretty old because uh, it has a PS2 keyboard connectors and old uh, analog VGA ports. Um, let's uh, see how it was built. Uh, if we remove the top cover, we can uh, look down and see a single circuit board. Uh, those blue connectors, of course, are the uh, VGA connections, the uh, silver are the uh, PS2 keyboard uh, and most ports. Uh, first off, I guess I was a bit surprised. It's all off-the-shelf components. I guess I expected a bit of custom silicon. Uh, PC industry volumes tend to be pretty high, but I guess KVM switches uh, all were a bit uh, rare. Let's see. Um, the VGA signals are all analog, so if we zoom in, we can see a 74HC4052. In fact, we see a whole bunch of them scattered on the board. If I just pop up the block diagram, those are a dual four-channel analog MUX DMUX part, so a really great choice if you're trying to move around a modest speed uh, analog signal on a circuit board. And certainly VJ signals aren't super fast, so a pretty good choice. Uh, the larger part there marked the uh, HC244. If I pop up that block diagram, we can see those are four-channel tri-state drivers. And I suspect those are a really great choice for building a bus-type architecture for the digital uh, PS2 signals. That leaves the largest component uh, marked in ELAN EM78. P44. Now, there's a company I wasn't very familiar with, so I do a bit of Googling, and uh, it popped up a company here in Taiwan that uh, specialized in microcontrollers. Uh, on the web, I can find a listing, and they say that it was a pick like architecture, but rather than the 12 or 14 bits used in my microchip, uh, they have 13 bit instruction words. So I'm not sure if they were trying to work around patent law or trying to work around some sort of copyright uh, that uh, microchip might hold, uh, but uh, they chose an unusual word length. So here's the first photo. It's a uh, die marking and it clearly confirms that the uh, silicon die comes from this company called Elan. Uh, the die number EG5658, of course, that doesn't match the part number on the package. That's not too unusual. It's quite possible that Elan packages this die into uh, multiple uh, types of components and sells them on at different price points and different capabilities. Uh, let's uh, zoom out to the entire silicon die and we can sort down the big areas. Um, the uh, very regular large array on the left there is a 4K by 13-bit uh, one-time programmable ROM, according to the data sheet. Strange size, 13 bits uh, wide, not 8, 16, or 32 as you would sort of expect. Um, now, they call it a one-time programmable ROM, but I suspect really it's uh, just an EEPROM. And uh, if this package had a crystal window on it, you could actually shine some light into it and erase it. Um, but of course, uh, for cost reasons, uh, in a plastic package, it becomes one-time programmable. Um, let's see, the middle uh, block then would be the array access control for the uh, EEPROM and a programming circuit. Uh, the block on the upper right uh, looks like the microcode. Um, if I zoom a little bit, I can see a sort of a pattern of uh, what appears to be a binary code. And um, that would then mean the register set would be uh, below it. And below that, I suspect it's the RAM. Uh, small, small RAM array, 148 bytes, so very typical of a microcontroller. Um, all in all, actually, uh, use the word typical again, uh, it's a typical looking microcontroller. Uh, the design is probably about 15 to 20 years old. Let's see, uh, let's take a look at another component, the uh, yeah, 74HC42 and decap that one. Uh, that's that four channel uh, MUX D MUX analog. Um, you can see, of course, how much different this silicon die is. And uh, there's only a few dozen transistors on these type of components. They uh, date back about 40 years from the design. Um, still very much a viable component, though, certainly if you're uh, trying to shunt an analog signal around, it's going to sit the size of the transistors, so uh, not much to be gained with a higher process node. Okay, well, let's pull it all together. Uh, there's four uh, VGA inputs. One, two, three, four. And the VGA, uh, there's five signals of interest, I suspect, that you have to carry. You have to carry the red, the green, the blue, the uh, horizontal sync called H-sync, the vertical sync. And basically they put down a 4052 to act like a MUX. Basically it's a, a switch. Uh, it, it's actually a FET, but it acts like a switch. So and you have to switch five signals uh, per port. And of course there were five, uh, sorry, there are four ports. There's uh, five HC 4052s. And that's because what would happen is you have one connector here with this. Then of course you'd repeat it four times. You create a, a bus like structure as you run up and down. And each one would connect into this bus. And uh, then on the other side, going to the actual monitor, you put down a, an HC4052. And uh, because I think as a isolation, or potentially an application, no, probably just isolation, but 
you would of course pick the signals up and the switches all be held closed but then so you basically have uh, these 4052s you have uh, four of those and of course those are gonna have to control signal and that goes down to the uh, elan controller of course that's what it's for and for the uh, ps2 signals they're a little bit easier they're um data and clock and i think this is where the uh, hc244 came in because uh same structure basically you'd have um now actually eight of these because you have uh, data you have a keyboard and a um mouse for each one so and the 244s are basically a tristatable outputs so and they have control signals and you can tie those together in groups of um of four put those control signals back into this elan here you have four going up for your your analog and the other thing you require of course is a, a switch a momentary switch to switch between the ports now obviously this uh, microcontroller doesn't have much to do it just sequences between some lines you'd almost have done it with some uh, discrete logic but it's almost always cheaper to put down a microcontroller so uh, there you go real straightforward approach and obviously it worked because that was a commercially successful product so that is what i found about an older uh, uh an ngear uh, analog kvm